Robin Hood and the Shooting Match. The Sheriff of Nottingham was sitting in court one day, doing what he did best, scheming. He shouted and cursed at some of the nobles and the men the king had sent him. He thought all of them fools and their ideas on how to catch Robin Hood were beyond stupid. The sheriff was an arrogant man, and he would call out anyone who dared question his genius. Many of the king's men now doubted the competence of the sheriff. The sheriff knew he needed to prove to the king that he was indeed worthy of catching this dreaded outlaw, the wolf's head, Robin Hood. The sheriff of Nottingham sat up all night stewing over ideas. He sat alone thinking poorly of his men, wondering how they always let him down again and again, taking no blame on himself. He only thought about the burdens and blunders of others. How could he do any such wrong? Why, he thought, was he cursed with such incompetent fools? Soon the sheriff thought of a plan, a dastardly and clever plan. He knew Robin Hood and the country yeomen were fond of the longbow. Archery, he thought. The people love games and competition. There shouldn't be any reason why Robin Hood wouldn't show up, probably disguised or hiding his true identity somehow. But it would be a perfect opportunity to catch the outlaw if he offered a prize that no man could refuse. So the sheriff then got a hold of a golden arrow. This prize would be worthy of kings, let alone a forest outlaw. Robin Hood would surely show up. Word of a golden arrow being offered would surely spread far and wide. The sheriff told his men to ride forth and tell every ear about this shooting match. All were to attend. And so it was heard far and wide. Nottingham Castle is to be the site of the most festive competition it had ever seen. In attendance at the competition, there was to be plenty of ale, artisans selling their wares, and all the revelry and fun that could possibly be had. The sheriff was right. Word of this game did reach the ears of the very clever Robin Hood. Robin spread the word among his merry men, and they all agreed that this was clearly a trap, but Robin thought the arrow would provide an excellent prize. A golden arrow that could feed a hundred peasants on a hundred homes, not to mention some food and ale for the men of Shearwood Forest. The day had come. It was a sight to behold in Nottingham Castle. Massive tents were erected, and all matter of bards and minstrels were summoned to play cheerful tunes. Lords and ladies arrived dressed in their best and brightest finery that England could provide. Open markets and vendors were selling ripe meat off the bone. Kegs of ale were open, and all of Nottinghamshire was enjoying the party, thanks to the sheriff. But most important part of the day's events was indeed the archery contest. Three targets were set up 50 paces from the shooters. The contestants consisted of six fine archers. They were Gilbert the Redcap, Adam Dell, Dickon Crookshank, William Leslie, Hubert Cloud, and Swithin Hertford. Two others were yeomen of Yorkshire, and another, a tall stranger, in blue. And lastly, there was a tattered stranger in scarlet rags who wore a patch over his eye. The sheriff looked over at one of his men-at-arms. He asked the man if he could see Robin Hood among the men who had assembled. The man answered in the negative. He could not see any man who looked like Robin Hood. All the men were known to the folk as too big or too small to be Robin Hood in disguise. And the stranger in scarlet had a patch over his eye and a brown beard instead of a gold one like Robin Hood. The sheriff grew frustrated as usual. The archers took their places, and the horns sounded off at the beginning of the competition. Each man fired two arrows at their targets. They were all fine shots indeed, hitting their targets with shrewd accuracy. It came time for the stranger in scarlet to take his shot. He raised his bow, knocked his arrow, and aimed with but one eye, and the crowd held their breath. The stranger got no cheering from the crowd. He let loose his first arrow, which hit dead in the center of the target. The crowd gasped, 
Adam Dell's arrow had hit in the center red as well, bringing them to a tie. The stranger then pulled another arrow and fired, hitting Adam Dell's arrow and splitting it in half. The other archers, whose turn it was to be after the stranger, looked at each other and gave up. They proclaimed that there was no chance for them to beat the stranger. The crowd cheered and gasped, and bets were all exchanged. People longed to know the stranger's name and to see him receive his reward, the golden arrow. The sheriff came from his high seat with the golden arrow in his grubby hands. He approached the stranger and asked for his name. The stranger replied he was simply Jock from London Town. The sheriff offered Jock a place in his ranks, a job as one of his men-at-arms or an archer in his assembly. He would receive four marks every Christmas tide and a place in the castle, not to mention a great deal of honor. The stranger turned down the offer, wanting the golden arrow instead. The sheriff was furious. Surely, this man with skills of that nature could take on Robin Hood himself. That same day in Sherwood Forest, stood before his, Robin stood before his merry men. He took off the scarlet robes and took off the eye patch that had disguised him well. They all cheered as he showed them how he had dyed his beard with acorn oil and tricked the sheriff. He showed them the golden arrow as they all had a merry feast in Sherwood Forest. But Robin couldn't be thought a coward. The sheriff was easily expecting him to show up in the contest. But Robin had done such a clever job of trickery that the sheriff would never know who had won. Robin and Little John rode back to Nottingham. The sheriff was sitting at his feast hall with all of his men in attendance. Soldiers, men-at-arms, tax collectors, and noblemen. When suddenly an arrow came flying through the window and landed on the table. It had a piece of parchment strung to it. The sheriff tore it off and read what was inscribed. He began to turn red in the face as he spat and cursed and yelled for everyone to leave at once. The letter told of how it was Robin Hood who had won the golden arrow and tricked the sheriff so well.